everyone uh, on Facebook Live. We're here at City Gate. Um, we just had our, our worship time, and uh, we our speaker tonight is Jane Baker. Yes, I'm afraid I'm going to say her name wrong because I don't like being on the camera, but <laughs> I got it right. So, Jen, if you want to come up, and um, we'll just pretend the camera's not there. Okay. Okay. Father God, thank you um, for Jen's willingness to come and um, share with us part of her story and part of the things that you're doing and have done in her life. Um, so we just pray that you'll calm any nerves or anything that she might be feeling and that um, your spirit will just uh, flow through her and bring the words that you want us to hear tonight. Um, so we just give give this all to you, and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. Guess it's me now. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, um, like Kim said, my name is uh, Jen Brubaker, and I'm excited to be here. I'm nervous, but excited. Um, I felt immediately when Kim sent me the email that it was a it was a yes. Like, I felt like God was like, yes, do it. So, um, even though I don't normally do this, I feel very inadequate. Um, I just praise God that he is glorified through what I need to share. Um, so, um, sorry, now I'm already like lost my place. So a little bit about myself. Um, I grew up in Denver, which is right down the road here. Um, I went to Cacalico. My husband, Andrew, went to Cacalico. Um, we were high school sweethearts, um, <laughs> uh, which is not normally common that you marry your boyfriend from high school, but we did. Um, and so and it's, we've been married for oh, 22 years now. Um, I'm an MRI tech over at Wellspan Upper and Huddle, and I've worked there since 2003, so I'm that old. Uh, <laughs> um, and Andrew, I have to say, my handsome husband, Andrew, because he said in your bio, you said we have handsome sons, but you didn't say your husband's <laughs> handsome. So I married to Andrew, my handsome husband, Andrew, Andrew, and we are blessed with three handsome sons. Um, Dylan, our oldest, is 19. He goes to Penn State down in Berks County um, for engineering. Uh, he's a sophomore. Logan is 18. He's a senior at Cacalco. He plays football. He's looking at going to Thaddeus Stevens to be an electrician. And Cade, our youngest, he is 13 and in eighth grade at Cacalico. So um, I've been a disciple of Jesus Christ since the age of nine. Um, besides a few ups and downs in my teenage years, I've pretty much walked a straight line with God. <laughs> um, I didn't really do anything too crazy and wild. So I was sharing earlier, I often feel like I don't really have much of a testimony to share. Like, I didn't come from something terrible. Um, I was raised in a Christian home, and um, so I've often actually felt that a little bit uh, nervous to share my testimony because I feel like I don't really know what to share sometimes. But as my husband, my handsome husband, reminds me, um, <laughs> being saved by Christ is a miracle. So we all have a testimony to share. Um, <clears throat> so anyways... So through the, over the last um, 10 years, I started to look at my life and my story with God, um, and I can see that God is working and moving even in, things, even in small things. Um, sometimes those inch-by-inch inch steps that we take in obedience is what is leading us to a place where we need to obey and trust God like never before. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm starting my story. Um, my family started on a path that I pretty much didn't see coming about eight years ago. Um, my husband... Um, who is very introverted, <laughs> hates public speaking um, kind of person where he'd like get sick to the stomach to speak in public, um, came after church to me and said, um, I feel like God's calling me to go in seminary to be a pastor. I'm um, like, okay. Like, <laughs> um, he, was, he was working at Effort National Bank in there. He was a facilities manager for them. And I was like, well, okay, whatever. <laughs> so... We went, I went along with it. We prayed about it and obviously had conversations about it. But anyways, um, he went. Um, he, he ended up um, going through their two-year program that he had needed to take and up at Myerstown at our denomination's um, school. And then he amazingly got hired as part-time pastor at our home church in Akron. We went to Akron Grace ECC Church. Um, and so it was kind of cool to be blessed to in our home church when he got hired as a pastor. He still worked full-time at the bank and was part-time at, at the church. So um, we were attending that church already for 14 years, so it was a pretty easy transition. Um, <clears throat> so, But this, I would say, was probably the first hurdle in us trusting God 
And I will state now that I am a control freak. I like things planned. I don't like to be surprised. Um, I want to have everything figured out. I want to fix things for people. And so, as you can see, that's probably going to be a problem in life. <laughs> um, so just remember that detail for later. So um, he took on the new role um, alongside of his full-time job, like I said. Um, <clears throat> he, you know, worked in youth. We both worked in youth ministry there. We both served in men's and women's ministry. I was on the praise team. All sorts of things we were involved in. Um, we were in our element. We were thriving. Our kids were thriving. Um, it was, it was, everything was going smoothly, <laughs> which is how I liked it. <laughs> um, then the great year of 2020 happened. Um, lots of crazy things going on in the world in 2020. But for us, we both felt um, very much that God kept placing on our heart that he, that we had a desire to want to be serving in our own community in, in Cocalico, our Cocalico community. We didn't know why God was putting this on our heart. It was a pretty strong feeling, and we were praying about it. We tried different things, you know, and I've served. We um, helped out at, with Rod Redke over at Real Life Ministries. Like, there's different things that we are involved in, but it, you know, it, it wasn't, it wasn't satisfying what we were feeling in our hearts. I kind of put it on the back burner, just kind of went on about our life. Um, but then, probably in about the next year and a half, um, March of 2022, God put in, a, a, put in front of us an opportunity for Andrew to. He was offered a full-time position as a pastor at a church in Leamstown, which is the Pocalico School District. <laughs> um, so uh, it was not what we were expecting. We were very content and happy at the church that we were at. Um, but And we just were kind of like, oh, well, this isn't really what we were praying for, God. Like, <laughs> but um, we prayed about it. We um, prayed a lot about it. Uh, we talked about it with people we trusted. Um, but this was a big deal. Um, maybe to some it doesn't seem like a big deal. God wasn't asking us to move from our house or school district or town. Um, but we were leaving a church family, and that was heartbreaking. Um, our church is is our family. And a lot of you, if you're involved in a church, sorry, <laughs> um, it's your family. And so it was a really big decision for us. Um, however, as us wives tend to do, I felt immediate that God, it was a big yes. And my husband just was like taking forever to figure this out. <laughs> I was like, God saying yes. Like as, as heartbreaking as it was going to be, I was an immediate yes, like yes. But I had to wait patiently. Um, and I did. And he wrestled and he wrestled and he wrestled. Um, but by the end of April, I guess it was, he, he did say yes um, to going. Um, so he took the position at the new church. Um, I can't understand or explain why I immediately felt God's peace with the decision, um, but I did. He gave that to me, and maybe it was just me to be able to support Andrew wrestling with it, that I was just there waiting. But, um, yeah, but it was hard. Um, our kids, our youngest, he cried like he just bawled. <laughs> don't tell him that. Sorry, Facebook. Don't tell him. He's 13 now. That would be embarrassing. But um, <laughs> he was, I mean, this is all they knew. This was their church family. This is, this is where they grew up. Um, so that was heartbreaking to see that. Um, but, but we all, like, came to a conclusion together as a family that this is what God would, was wanting for us. Um, and as, I was excited. I was filled with excitement. I was filled with heartbreak, but I was filled with excitement um, for how God was going to move in us and through us and use us um, and, and Andrew, too, in this new position. Um, so after much prayer and conversation, we, we, uh, we you know, said yes to God. So we went. So we did it. <laughs> um, so our prayer of serving and impacting our local community was answered, but we never saw it coming in this way. Um, and this is where Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 um, came, comes into play for me, as, and we read it earlier. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways submit to him, and he will make your path straight. These verses were repeated to me in so many different ways over our time of discernment. And it's just, I love when God does that. Like, you're struggling, and you're like, wow, I keep hearing this verse over and over again. Um, but he obviously is hitting you over the head with it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we obeyed the call God placed on us, and we lived happily ever after, right? No? Isn't that how it goes? Oh, I thought we wanted to go. Um, obey God and you'll have no problems, no hardship. Well, obviously this is not right. Um, but God does promise us that he will be with us. He will never fail us. 
He will guide us, and his glory will be made known. Mm -hmm. So following obeying God in this decision was the right thing for us, but sometimes in that obedience, they're still hurting. Our hearts were broken. Our dear close friends' hearts were broken. People were confused on why God would call us away. We felt like we were letting people down and disappointing people we love very much. God, why does obeying you feel so bad right now? That was a question I, I've said many times. Um, but honestly, I didn't have an answer to it, but we just trusted that God's plan for our family and for his kingdom, the big church, mm -hmm. was going to be blessed and glorified through this. So in July of 2022, we said goodbye to those we loved, and we walked out of a church that we called home for 18 years. Um, okay, so God, here we're ready for whatever you have planned. Now, now remember, I'm a planner, <laughs> and I like to be in control. So this was by no means anything of me. It was all God that we obeyed, because this is like out of my element to make this like drastic change um, for us. But I had complete peace in this, and but little did I know, in a few months, my lack of control would be glaring in my face. So we started our ministry at Ringstown EC Church in August of 2022, and can I just say that we were welcomed and received with such overwhelming beauty. It was, it was great. I mean, in no time at all, we could see that God provided another amazing church family um, that we could add to what we already have. Um, we built relationships. Andrew dove into his ministry. Our kids plugged in. Um, we were feeling confident and good of where God called us to be. Though the hurt and sadness was still there and we were working through those feelings, um, we felt like excitement for how God was going to use our family. So as time went by, we were approaching Thanksgiving, which would have been this not like last year at Thanksgiving. <laughs> And um, we were soon going to be um, given news that would rock our family. The day after Thanksgiving, um, I found myself sitting with my husband's parents in a small room at the cancer center, um, receiving news that my mother-in-law was diagnosed with stage four ovarian cancer. Mm -hmm. um, and she was pretty much told by the doctor that she pretty much won't make it past five years. Like that's, <laughs> like, that's all you hear in those, mm -hmm. those moments. So hearts dropping, tears falling, we sat there trying to process what the doctor just told us. So for me, I'm a healthcare worker. I like to fix things. I like kicked in the gear. I'm taking my notes like, <laughs> um, all right, how can I fix this? What can I do? What plans do we have? What food does she need to start eating? Like I was like, like going like in my head, like trying to figure things out because um, that's what I do. Um, we left the, the appointment very discouraged and scared. Um, we drove to my house um, because my husband Andrew just got back and the boys were there. So we told them there was more tears, fear, shock, anger. Um, for me, though, I sat there feeling like I had to stay strong. I had to not cry. I needed to fix it, solve the problem, put a game plan into action <laughs> because that's what I do. So my mother-in-law faithfully trusted God through this journey of many, many rounds of chemo, um, hair lo loss, never would have thought my father-in-law would shave her head. Like, I wish I could have been there to see it because he's just not, that's just not him. Anyways, side note on that. Um, you know, she had other symptoms going on, um, but I mean, it's beautiful if you know her at all. It's just amazing to see how she's trusted God through all this um, and just stayed positive. And she's like witnesses to everybody that she sees. She's in the hospital and she's just like telling people about God, so, which is really cool. Um, <clears throat> so me, <coughs> she's great, positive, trusting God. Me, I'm letting all of my medical knowledge, all the things that I know mm -hmm. about working in healthcare take over. Um, my trust in the powerful work of God was second to my knowledge that I thought I had. Um, I was doubting, I was looking only at the survival percentages and what her CAT scan showed me, because I saw them, um, and I, you know, could see the cancer in her. And, um, I prayed, I trusted God, but honestly, I didn't know how this was going to turn out. And I just, you know, I, I was really thinking of the worst case scenario. So of course, I never shared this with anybody. <laughs> I'm a pastor's wife. I'm a Christian. I'm a youth leader. I'm a mom. You know, I, I try to be perfect, <laughs> Kim, mm. and it's very hard for me to uh, share the vulnerability side for me. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't feel like I could say those thoughts that I was doubting. <clears throat> so, so 
Sorry, I lost my place. Um, how did I have so much trust and faith in God just a few months earlier with this big decision in our life, and yet here I am doubting him and thinking he wasn't going to come through? So finally, it was surgery time. She was going, it, so she was diagnosed the day after Thanksgiving and then in, went through a bunch of chemo, and then in May, she had a major surgery. And going into that surgery, um, the surgeon really couldn't, like, give us a very confident, like, he knew what the hysterectomy part, that was a definite, but he didn't know other things. He's like, until I open her up, and, you know, like I said, I, I could see that there was cancer in her from CAT scans and stuff. So we just didn't know. There was many variables of how she could come out of the surgery, um, a colostomy bag, like all sorts of things that we just didn't know, which was out of my control, and I couldn't do anything about it. Um, after several hours of waiting in the waiting room with my husband and my father-in-law, we were told she was out of surgery, and we could go see her. So as we waited for the doctor, I was still sitting there doubting. I thought the surgery was actually too short. <laughs> it was like, not very long. Wait a minute. <laughs> Something's not right here. Um, it just seemed too short So from what he originally said. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, so the doctor, though, came in, and he said, well, I think I got it all. And we're like, I'm like, what? <laughs> he's like, I got everything, you know, hysterectomy part, but he's like, other parts in the abdomen that we felt I got out, and I didn't see a cancer anywhere else in her body. And I was like, no, she had it on her spleen. She had, like, and he's like, I, I I don't feel like there was any other cancer. And I was like, shocked. <laughs> I was I was shocked. And um, I mean, in that moment, I, I truly believe God healed her, um, which was, I mean, I just was very humbled in that moment because I was doubting so much. And so obviously, how do you think I had any control? I don't know why I thought I had any control in this situation. Um, how do I think I knew more? Because I work in healthcare and I know science of cancer. What, but at that moment, with God, I had this amazing, um, humbling, and thankful um, just praise to him. And I, I kind of kept it all to myself sitting there because, like, they're all, like, talking, and I'm like, holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> um, how did, why did I doubt him? Um, in this past year of our life, God heard our cries and pleas. He looked past my doubt, and he answered our prayers in ways with his plans and his power and love. Now, my mother-in-law is still diagnosed with stage 4 cancer, and she does go through maintenance treatment. Um, she will for the rest of her life, um, but she just had a CAT scan this week. She just met with the doctor, and all is still looking good. So we will praise him for now for all that he has done, which is amazing. Um, so I guess, ladies, I'm here tonight as a chronic control freak who was humbly, humbled by God in so many ways this past year. I realized that obedience to God is hard painful at times, but so exciting and faith-building. And honestly, it's not about me, but about his glory. Mm -hmm. So obeying is not always going to lead us to an easy path in life, but it will lead to a path led by God and him preparing mm -hmm. you for his great works, which is, leads me to my other favorite verse, Ephesians 2.10. For we are God's handiwork, mm -hmm. created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. My challenge to you when God causes your life to pivot, and I don't know if anyone's a Friends fan, <laughs> but the word pivot should mean something to you if you ever watch the show Friends, but that might be a joke that's going to drop in the room. <laughs> Anyways, I encourage you to stay steadfast in your faith and trust in God because the creator of the world created you, and he loves you more than anyone, and he calls us to obedience, and he will never take you into something that he didn't already go before you preparing for your arrival. When we doubt, he patiently waits for us to realize what he is calling us to, and he celebrates with us when we finally obey. I often think about that moment in the hospital after receiving this great news that God was smiling down at me, telling me, I told you I got this. Mm -hmm. So that's my what I wanted to share with you ladies tonight. So well, just yeah. stay right stay right stay there. Right there. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions or any comments about sorry that's okay about what Jen shared can you relate to any any parts of that parts of her story trying to fix things mm -hmm. I don't like that too the whole control thing oh yeah, yeah. Okay. I think women women tend to have that yeah problem. I think it's just in our DNA <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah I like the word pivot 
I did watch Friends, so I don't know. Okay. That. <laughs> but, but I do like that word. When you, I, how did you say that? When God says it, when you say it, I said, pivot, um, you when it? God causes your life to pivot, yeah. I encourage you to stay steadfast in your faith. Yeah, I like that word because that because pivot happens. It's a quick thing, right? Because um, I think. Do football players do that? Like pivot or what? Sure. Or basketball? I, guess it is. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You should know you have football players at your house. But anyway, the pivot, if I remember correctly, is is a quick turn of events. Mm-hmm. You know, a different direction. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You all of a sudden are going a different direction, and and God's pretty good at that yeah. a lot yeah. of times, right? And so being control freaks, that doesn't work with us no, very not well. Usually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, I know Jen's in-laws because they actually volunteer here at City Gate. Um, they came with your pastor, on, mm-hmm. well, your Our former pastor, pastor <laughs> on Friday mornings, and and I was told that they weren't going to be able to help anymore because of her cancer diagnosis, but I didn't know the extent of it. Yeah. So I'm glad to hear that she's um, doing well. Yeah, um, yeah, that's great. So I like that word pivot. Um, so one thing that you didn't mention that I would be nervous about, like when Andrew took the full-time pastor job, he, he had to leave his full-time job that he had for how many years? Mm. Uh, like, I don't know, close to 20 years probably. Yeah. yeah. So to me, that's a scary thing yeah. right there mm-hmm. because it's something totally different, you know, and how's this going to go and what if it doesn't work out and I'm giving up my my full-time job that I've done for so many years, that to me that was scary. makes me nervous. Yeah. 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 So you don't really touch on that part, but that's something that I thought about. And what was cool in that was, I'm sorry, what was cool in that is that um, I had worked part-time with the kids, like since the kids were little, and in that same timing, because it was going to be a pay cut going into ministry, mm-hmm. um, I was actually able to go full time, and it just like it all just evened out like financially, and it, yeah, that was worse. definitely going to be something that was going to be a worry for us, mm-hmm. and God just provided again yeah, without you even like looking into yeah. it. Yeah, somebody. Yeah, I was just going to say that's where that lean not on your own understanding comes into play. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't pay us to try to figure it all out ourselves. That's for sure. And um, you talked about doubt. I think we talked about doubt a lot. Yeah. And I think we've talked about doubt here, too. You know, how that's where Satan gets us. Like, it's the same old lie from the garden. Did God really say that? God really said you couldn't do that? You know, that's what he plants the doubt. How's this going to work out? You know, uh, if you leave your full-time job, how is this going to work? Um, so he, he's always planning that doubt and then with your mother-in-law mm-hmm. you had a lot of doubts and um, yeah so we have to really watch that um, and and it's all about God's glory you brought right. you brought that out too so your your mother-in-law is all about glorifying God through her illness mm-hmm. and that's that's important too anybody else have questions or comments or encouragement for Jen? Because now she's a full-time pastor's wife, and we have a couple <laughs> other pastor's wives here, so. Which I never thought that would be a role I would play either. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about the, the pleasing of things. Like, I yeah. had to work through that stuff, too. Like, okay, wait, I should be expected to be perfect? And that was all on me, like, putting that on me. It was nobody else. But right. I had that, to work through that, too. That is, that would be a thought of mine. Like, oh, everybody's going to be looking at me, like, Everybody's oh, going to yeah. be looking at my family, like we're yeah. going to be in the spotlight. And I don't know if you guys have gone through that or not, but um, that would be a concern for me, especially from my background. Um, you know, it, it's, um, what, what do they call it? Um, I can't think of the word, but it, pleasing people, you know, people, people, people pleasers. People. Yeah, there's another word I was thinking of, but I can't get it right now, but um, that's a struggle of mine. Mm-hmm. That was a struggle of mine taking this group, um, is because I fall into that trying to be a people pleaser and what do people think of me? And yeah. you know, it, yeah. it's just the focus is on me and and, and that's not the way it should right. be. Not you know, it's not, not, it's not <laughs> us yeah. at all. So um, 
Yeah, I mean, we all we all struggle with different things, um, you know. But most of the time, it's that we get our focus off of him and and onto us, and that's not what we want to do. Did anybody on Facebook have any any questions or anything? And you guys have a huge youth group. We do at Roomstown. We do because yeah. I saw a picture. I saw Some pictures you posted. Yeah, we played Mission Impossible. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. In the dark. That. Yeah. <laughs> Running around Wingstone Park. Yeah. yeah. In the dark. That's, yeah. We yeah. had like 63 kids there that night. So. I know. Like it yeah. was this huge that's, group of kids yeah. in that picture. It's just I couldn't been believe lo- it. Like growing. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And so you and Andrew are. So he's the you. associate pastor over wives. Like you're right there, saying. Were you gonna say something, Heidi? Um, I was just gonna say I can imagine it must be challenging to be in the medical field. Mm-hmm. and be, be in your position. Um, I, I think for any Christian, um, I think that it's a struggle sometimes, whether you know, like thinking about like the whole healing aspect of things, like, you know, and then looking at the, what the doctors say, right. you know, mm-hmm. it's that a, it's a hard line to, to <laughs> balance a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so. Cause I mean, there, he, might not heal, do you know what I mean? But it's so, you know, you just right. have to trust that yeah. what he has planned is what is best. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much, Jen. Mm-hmm. I appreciate yeah, you being absolutely. willing. I, um, I did send out an email when I was going to start uh, taking over the group. I sent out an email to a bunch of women that I knew um, and also would have their email address. Um, and I sent it out uh, one morning, and then I did something for like two minutes. I went back to my email, and I already had two responses, and hers was one of them. (laughs) So that really um, confirmed things for me that I was doing the right thing, too. So thanks for your quick response. Peg, who was here a couple weeks ago, she was the first one. And uh, so I... I think it was first, I think. But you two were like right there, like two minutes after I sent it, I already had two responses. So I really appreciate you doing that. Um, Yeah, so thank you. And um, if anybody's in the Reamstown area and you want to visit a church, you're right there. What is right that? on Street. Church Street. Church Street. Okay. <laughs> <Imagine that. laughs> I wasn't sure yeah. what yeah. exactly that church yeah. or what street that was, mm-hmm. but there's three three churches I think on that road. So. Yeah, so it has a yeah, there is. Mm-hmm. So it has a good name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> thanks again so yeah. much, and um, you're welcome anytime yeah. to our main point yeah. group. Absolutely. And um, <laughs> so I think that that's it for the live. Um, So we'll see you next week.